everyone. Happy So What Day. I hope you're having a great Tuesday and great start to your week so far. You know, Mother's Day is coming up soon. All of the fun Mother's Day cards and things are in the store. So I have a great project, actually two, to share with you today that make really, really quick gifts uh, you can make one for yourself and one for a friend in probably an hour or less. So we're going to be talking about scarves today. And I know, you know, some of you live in parts of the world that are very warm right now. Um, but I will say, you know, spring is very fickle. We never really know what the weather is going to do, not only from day to day, but really hour to hour. Um, especially here in Colorado, we had snow yesterday. Uh, today we woke up and it was 34 degrees and it's going to get all the way up to 70 or so later this afternoon. So a scarf is really a great spring accessory because, you know, you can wear it in different ways and especially a lightweight knit scarf um, or even something like a cotton voile. Um, or a cotton sateen, something really silky and nice against your skin. These can be really lightweight, uh, but you can also apply this method to a letter, little bit heavier weight fabric for those winter months as well. So I think it's a great thing to create uh, for a spring accessory, especially a gift idea. And if you're purchasing fabric, and you have some left over because you need it to be rather long. Um, so, you know, buying about a half a yard of wide 54 or 60 inch wide fabric, which is what this is made out of, you can get two scarves out of that. So again, you can gift one and keep one for yourself. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before I get into that, ooh, also... Yes, we will be making this out uh, using a serger because we are still in the throes of National Serger Month. So we are really celebrating using our sergers um, and learning new things about our serger. But if you don't have a serger, I will give you some tips on how to make these using your regular sewing machine as well. So a lot of people, oh, Crystal says my scarf matches my so what wall art. I'm so coordinated today. <laughs> that only happens every so often. You can grab your own So What wall art if you would like at sulky.com. We have some really cute um, laser cut wooden wall pieces that are unique and exclusive to Sulky. So uh, that can be yours as well. All right. Let's see. Before we get started, speaking of National Serger Month, we have a great sale going on this week. This sale will end at midnight on, I believe, the 3rd of May. It's 30% off 12 and 30 weight cotton thread blendables in the king spools and jumbo cones, which is really what we like to use on our serger. Those larger spools just fit better on the serger, but you can also put smaller spools on the serger as well. Don't be afraid of that. Um, I've actually uh, been running out of a thread, so I will wind bobbins to use all the same thread colors in my serger and put the bobbins on my serger. I know, don't call the serger police on me, but you know what? They worked. All right, but for the most part, we need a lot of thread for those loopers and a regular amount of thread for the needles. So those king and jumbo cones are really great. And I suggest if you want your blendables color and you don't want to run out, grab up those king spools and jumbo cones while they are on sale at 30% off. It's a really great deal. Also on sale, original metallic thread, filane which is our 100% acrylic thread that blooms when you brush it for machine embroidery and decorative applications. But it's also really great in the loopers of your serger. And if you like to make things like fleece blankets with a serger uh, rolled hem edge um, or, you know, decorative uh, 
seamed jackets that don't have a lining, but you want those seams to look really pretty on the inside, you can try using that fillet thread for a really nice feeling, cozy to the touch seam finish. Also our Solvi stabilizers and heat away stabilizers are all on sale. No coupon needed. You can just head over to sulky.com and grab up those really great deals before they expire. All right. Also, before we get started with our Surger project, I want to make uh, sure everyone is aware of our next free webcast. This is our Scissor Stasher webcast, and I am the instructor for this event. We will be going live on May 17th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time over on our Sulky Education platform, which is sewingonline.sulky. Dot com. You do need an account over there to add this to your own personal library, and then you will get some reminders before we go live. You can click on through to the event page and watch the entire webcast absolutely for free. Uh, we will be learning how to make this scissor stasher, which is a lanyard that you can wear around your neck and stash a little pair of scissors, the thread that you're using for that project, your pair of snips, all kinds of things can fit in this pocket so that everything you're using for that particular project is right there around your neck. How handy is that? Because I don't know about you, but I always kind of hide the mess that's going on at my sewing machine for most of our sew what's here um, because it's absolute chaos. <laughs> I'm always working on probably at least three things at once. So any way I can possibly contain the materials for each project, I'm going to do that because then I can just grab my scissor stasher, put it around my neck. I know I'm working on that project. Then I can make a second one for the other project I'm working on and have those things at hand. So I will be teaching you how to make this scissor stasher as shown, it has a cute little scissor motif on it. We actually sell those scissors as well at sulky.com. So you can grab up a little pair of scissors. I think they're about four inches tall. Um, and that's about the size scissor that's gonna fit in your scissor stasher. It also fits, where is it? My favorite little snips that I'm always telling you guys about. See, if I had them on my scissor stasher, I wouldn't be looking all around for them. And I kid you not, I have three pairs of my little curve tip squeezers that I'm always telling you about. But anyways, we have these flower power scissors. We also have some other scissors that will fit. These are great little scissors for traveling, for on the go sewing. I'll tell you a little bit, bit about my on the go sewing I did yesterday. These will fit the pouch. These little pudgy purple scissors will fit the pouch. I love how they have just a nice little tip, um, very sharp point. So it's great for if you take your quilt on the go and you're finishing the binding somewhere else maybe, or if you like to do handwork and you need some little snips. Um, you know, I wouldn't recommend them obviously for like cutting fabric yardage, but we all need little snips at the cutting table, when we're pressing something and we notice a little stray thread, we can just snip it. We also have these cute little pink ones at sulky.com. So you can grab up a little pair of scissors when you're buying your kit for the Scissor Stasher webcast. The kit is already on sale at $19.99. I know, Sulky is crazy, right? They just want to give you guys the best deal so that everybody can join us and make this great project. Here, let me show you the kit. The kit includes everything you need to create a one scissor stasher. Um, and you'll have enough thread and needles to create some more as well. So you'll get that teal fabric for the background for the main part of the pouch. You'll get the red fabric that we're going to use to trim that upper edge with the little cute little accent piece. You will get a one yard piece of grow grain ribbon that you can use to hang your lanyard around your neck. 
you'll get soft and sheer stabilizer, a one yard pack. That's what we're going to build the In the Hoop project on, soft and sheer stabilizer. You can't even tell there's any stabilizer in the finished project because it's so nice and soft and lightweight. You'll also get a piece of batting to go um, inside of your scissor stasher, give it a little um, you know, structure. And then you will get a pack of Microtex organ needles. This is the best needle to use for this particular project, as well as two spools of Sulky Polydeco thread. Now those two spools match those fabrics absolutely perfectly. So the design sews out. Oh, also, when you register for the event, you get our Sewing Men's the Soul patch design absolutely free as a thank you just for registering. So I am going to show you not only how to create the Scissor Stasher project itself, but I'm also going to give you tips on how to swap out the scissor design if you want to feature a different design on subsequent scissor stashers that you want to create. Because once you grab the kit, you're going to get the design file for this In The Hoop project. It was digitized and designed by Lisa Archer of Pickle Pie Designs. Lisa has really great In The Hoop projects. She really specializes in In The Hoop projects. So I'm going to show you how to swap out that scissor design. You can put a monogram on yours. You can put the Sewing Men's The Soul patch design on it. You can put other designs that fit on that scissor stasher um, you know, design area. So lots of education in this free webcast. Go ahead and register today. Grab up your patch design files and then you will be eligible also um, once you attend to win one of two fantastic door prizes during the event. All right, so I was just going to show you the one, the second one that I made that features the little patch design. And honestly, I just grabbed some fabrics from my stash to make this one and some ribbon from my stash. I will be honest and say the ribbon was not the right width um, for, you know, the project, but... I made it work to have a sample here, but here's what it looks like when you put the little patch design on here. And the patch design is meant to be a freestanding design so that you can create this freestanding patch that you can go and use some sulky invisible thread and sew it on a variety of things. But I'm gonna show you how to modify this in the hoop design to put your patch design directly onto the front of the scissor stasher. All right, so this is about, you know, how big it is and fits around your neck. And it's just a great little project and another great gift idea as well. Make one for yourself and one for a friend, just like the scarves we're going to make today. All right, so, oops. So before we get into the project, really quickly, I had to share a story with you about sewing on the go because we're talking about our lanyard, which we could take on the go with us, which I wish I had it last night because I already lost the bobbin I was using to transport thread. Um, and that's just another story, I guess. But at any rate, last night was the first night of soccer for my children. I love the beginning of soccer. I will say, though, that Spring soccer, we always start out absolutely freezing, and in the end of the season, we are so hot, we can barely stand to be on the field. <laughs> so last night, I was bundled up in my winter coat. I had a sweatshirt underneath. I wish I had uh, leggings underneath my jeans. I was so cold. Um, I start at 5.30, and I go all the way till 7.30, and I go back and forth between fields. It's crazy, but I love it. So I decided I would finish a sewing project that I have in the works that I'm going to be sharing with you in the next couple of weeks. It's another great Mother's Day gift idea, but I thought I would bring along um, the project. Here's a little sneak peek of it so that I could finish the binding while I was sitting in my little camping chair. Now, one thing I wish I had was a pair of gloves because my hands were freezing and they 
really, truly froze up on me <laughs> while I was trying to finish the binding. So I didn't even get it finished last night. I had to put it away and put my hands in my pockets. I wish I had my scissor stasher because I grabbed a little pair of scissors. I grabbed a bobbin's worth of thread. I grabbed some wonder clips. I had pins with me. And it would have been so great if I could just stash them all in my scissor stasher and bring that to the game with or to the practice with me. That would have been so smart. But the one smart thing I did do was I brought one of these little magnetic needle uh, holders that are new at sulky.com. And they're so awesome because they fit in your pocket like your phone. That's about the size of it. Actually, it's smaller than my phone, you can see. But great size. And not only is the inside magnetic, but there's enough room that once you have your pins and your needle in here, you can just close it up and it holds them all as well. There's room in here so that it you can pile up some needles, some uh, pins, and you're good to go. So I was smart enough to bring this along, thankfully. But as I told you, I lost my bobbin. It's somewhere in the car. Um, I did somehow get home with my scissors, but scissor stasher would have been a great accompaniment to that. I wonder how this fits in the scissor stasher, actually. Um, not quite, kind of pokes out. So, but at any rate, this makes another great gift idea or just grab one for yourself. And I'm gonna show you some other varieties that we have. We have Need a Little Love, cute. We have Stay Sharp, very cute. And then the one I was using was Get to the Point. So you can grab up one of these. They are only $9.99. They're new at sulky.com. You can grab up one of these, get your kit for $19.99, uh, grab up some of those great serger thread deals and you're well on your way to free shipping. Oh yes, don't forget your small pair of scissors as well. So you're all ready for the webcast, have some little gifty ideas, maybe even just a gift for yourself. You know, with Mother's Day coming up, I think it's important that we make some gift lists for the people that love us, right? My husband is always asking me, what would you like? And I always say, oh, nothing. I don't need anything. I have everything I need. It's okay. Things like that. Um, I forget about these little things that would just make my life so much easier. You know, it's only 10 bucks, little magnetic needle case. Okay. I had to share that with you because I had it last night and it was truly a lifesaver. Oh, we also have some other cute little uh, magnetic needle holders at sulky.com. This is shaped like a little macaron, right? We have them in teal and pink. Now, these don't store your needles, but they're so cute to have next to your sewing machine. And as you all know, <laughs> I like to use little cake plates, cupcake plates, and things like that to store my project materials trying to keep them separated. So this is one that I have on my station. It has the thread and trim and some wonder pins that I'm using for a particular project. Try to keep I try to keep those separate from the things in my scissor stasher that I'm using for another project. This is another cupcake holder that I always have. Uh, this one has needles, threads, and various notions um, that I'm using for another project. So see, I try to stay organized. It doesn't always stay that way. But where I'm getting at is these cuties would look so cute on your little cake plate that you can use to organize your projects. Relatively inexpensive. And again, these are magnetic on the top, but they also, around the center, can sharpen your needles and pins. Isn't that great? So you can just run your pins and needles across the little sharpener before you use them. So this is kind of a two-in-one. All right, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention because we have very limited stock of those 
And I think they would just make the cutest little gift for Mother's Day um, or Grandmother's Day, which I know I think we just had. Um, but really, any time of year, they would make a great little gift. Package that up with a handmade apron or a pot holder, and that would be so, so cute. All right, so speaking of gifts, today's gifty for one lucky viewer of So What is the Blooms and Breezes 58 Cotton Thread Assortment from Sulky. I know, aren't these fantastic colors? This is our 58 Cotton Thread on Small Snap Spools. You might be familiar with our cotton and steel brand thread, and those come in king spools only. But we also have those same great colors on smaller snap spools. Easier for traveling around, especially if you're like if you're doing binding on the go, like I find myself doing so much. A little bit of hand sewing or mending. Um, they have 160 yards, I want to say. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I have a hard time keeping all the thread yardages separate, to be quite honest. There are so many different thread spools, different yardages based on different thread weights. So please forgive me if I'm not getting that correct. Um, but at any rate, 10 spools, and these are really great springy colors that will just inspire your spring makes and into summer. These would be great for a baby quilt, um, things like that. So. This will go to one lucky viewer who is liking, commenting, sharing, um, subscribing to our YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube, liking us on Facebook. All of those things will automatically make you eligible for today's gift. All right. And I also love using this thread weight in the serger, believe it or not, in both needles and the loopers. If you like a cotton thread, if you're working with a um, lightweight cotton for your scarves, this would be a great thread to use in your serger. Don't think that you have to use a serger uh, thread that's labeled serger thread for your serger work. You can use any thread you want and you can use really thick thread in those loopers to create those decorative effects. You can even use metallic thread in one of your loopers and in one of your needles and do a decorative edge treatment for some napkins or placemats or something um, patriotic or July 4 themed. And that would be really cool. So, okay, let's get to the project at hand. Now, along with thread, and I will say for these scarves that I'm going to show you, uh, we used Sulky Poly Deco Thread. Poly Deco Thread is a 40 weight thread and... We mostly use it for machine embroidery, decorative stitches. We also use it for bag construction. We always use Poly Deco when we're working with Sally Tomato on our bag projects with them. They actually really prefer the Poly Deco thread. Um, it's very strong, a little bit heavier weight, but it also has that great sheen and those really yummy colors um, similar to what you would find with our rayon threads. All right, so we used Poly Deco thread for the scarves. Um, for this one, I used it in the both loopers and both needles. And let's see, for the other scarf, I'm going to show you with the ruffly edges. Um, you can use Poly Deco for uh, all your needle and loopers or you can use that cotton thread as well. And if you decide to go with a quilter's cotton for your infinity scarf, um, or a cotton voil, or a cotton sateen, you might wanna go with that 50 weight cotton thread, or you could use 30 weight cotton thread and a 12 weight cotton thread in the loopers. And if you use blendables, for that ruffly scarf, I'm gonna start by showing you, um, all of your seams are visible. So if you use a heavier weight thread, a 30 weight in the needles and a 12 weight in the loopers in the same blendables uh, thread colorway so that they match, you will have a really beautiful result um, with those exposed seams. So you have a lot of options for threads 
to use. And maybe you want to go with the 12 weight and 30 weight since those are on sale right now. And you can grab up those king spools or those jumbo cones and make lots and lots of scarves. So along with that, and especially if you don't have a serger and you want to try making these scarves with your sewing machine, I'm going to primarily be talking about working with knits. If you would like to use a woven fabric for these scarves instead, head on over to the blog posts. I linked to both of them in the description of today's post. If you're not seeing those links, you might have to click the little see more button on the lower right side of your screen and then the whole description will pop out. You'll see links for both scarf projects so you can get the entire how-tos. You will also see links for everything I'm talking about uh, today, as well as links to register for the Scissor Stasher webcast and links to grab up that kit. Because again, that kit's already on sale for $19.99 while supplies last. Okay. So if you're going to use your regular sewing machine to sew up these knit scarves rather than a woven, but again, very forgiving method today, so you could choose either fabric type. If you're going with the sewing machine method, you may find that these knit fabrics want to stretch or warp or move under the presser foot. You might also find that your presser foot pressure might be too much and the presser foot itself might be stretching the fabric while you're sewing it or causing the upper fabric to pull while the lower fabric is being pushed by the feed dogs. So you can try an even feed or walking foot and adjust the presser foot pressure. Make sure you get enough fabric so you can test on a couple of scraps. You'll want to test on your serger as well to make sure your differential feed is uh, at a proper setting for each one of these scarves as well. Um, also, what I find is a lifesaver with sewing knits is sulky, sticky Fabra Solvi. So what I like to do with the sticky Fabra Solvi is cut strips of it. And I actually have strips of it pre-cut and I roll them myself so that they are ready to go when I need to stabilize some seams and make sure that they don't shift, warp, or stretch while I'm sewing them. I know. So, Sticky Fabrisolvi is completely water soluble. You will apply this to your seams, then sew your seams right through the Sticky Fabrisolvi, and then when your garment or scarf or what have you is completed, everything is totally done, this will come out with the first washing of your garment or scarf or project. It's revolutionary, okay? Those seams will not stretch, warp, move, nothing under that presser foot. And you will apply it to both the upper fabric and the lower fabric along the seams that you are sewing. So you might want your strip a little bit wider than mine to make sure that you're catching it um, with the seam that you're sewing. On your sewing machine, of course, you need to select a stretch stitch or a narrow zigzag stitch if your machine doesn't have a stretch stitch option. The stretch stitch looks just like a zigzag. It's just kind of pointed down a little bit with the zags as opposed to a zigzag goes from side to side. That's really the only difference. So if you don't have a stretch stitch, select a narrow zigzag and then do some test stitches to make sure that that is narrow enough for a strong seam. If you have a wide zigzag, when you pull apart your fabrics, uh, you might have some kind of rippling. It might look like rippling when you open up the seams. You want it narrow enough so that it almost looks like a straight stitch once you open those fabrics up. All right, what other tips? You need a ballpoint or stretch needle. Um, we have Jersey organ needles or super stretch organ needles. Now, which one is right for your project? Well, if you are working with a fabric 
like this that I'm wearing, which almost feels like a double knit, but it's more like a, t a heavier t-shirt knit. Um, the Jersey needle will be just fine. If you are working with a really lightweight, like tissue weight um, knit or a knit with a lot of spandex um, in it, you will want that super stretch needle, which has a finer, smaller ball point. But both needles have a ball point to them. If you try to sew a knit with a sharp needle rather than a ball point, the sharp needle is going to pierce the fabric, creating a hole in the knit because knit is made up of these interlocking fibers. If you pierce a hole in it, you can't recover from that. You've created a hole in the fabric. You might notice over time that it doesn't really fray around that hole, but the hole might get bigger, larger, right? So you want a ballpoint needle so that instead of piercing through those interlocking fibers, it pushes them aside, opening up a space for the thread to fit into. Does that make sense? That's why we have to swap our needle to a ballpoint needle. Now, if you're doing embroidery on a knit, um, an embroidery needle and a universal have a slight ballpoint to them, but really not as much as you need. And especially with embroidery, where there's lots of needle penetrations in those fibers, you want to select probably a super stretch needle for your embroidery. But a machine embroidery needle could also work because again, that has a slight ball point to it. Who knew? Okay. Esther, I see your note about um, your audio and, vis and video not syncing up while you're watching. So what you can try doing is pausing this video and kind of let it run its course a little bit, then unpause and it will probably catch up, but it's really due to your internet speed. Um, you can also try going to the little wheel cog on the lower right hand side of your screen and selecting 720 uh, for the video audio output. Um, it's really just as simple as selecting that little cog and going to 720 because that is the, um, that's the resolution that I am streaming at. Okay, so sticky Fabrisolvi can really be a lifesaver if you want to use your sewing machine to sew this knit scarf or really working with any knit. You may want to cut yours, like I said, a little bit wider. I have a little bit wider strips already pre-cut as well, um, just to make sure that you're sewing over it as well as stabilizing that entire seam allowance with it too. And that can be helpful at the serger as well. A lot of us um, have a separate table for our serger because we're not always using it as much as our sewing machine. I have a little roller table that I put my serger on and I roll it up next to my sewing table when I'm going to use it. Um, and that being said, a lot of the times my fabric will drape off of the serger while I am serging it. Now, anytime a knit fabric is falling off of the table, that's creating stretch while we're sewing. So if you can put like a, what are they called? Like a TV tray? <laughs> are they still called TV trays? Uh, showing my age here. But anyways, if you could put like a TV tray or something next to, if you have a smaller serger table to hold up the excess fabric while you're sewing, that'll ensure that it's not stretching off of the table while you are serging it. We don't want to cause excess stretch while we're sewing. We want it to be like we're sewing a woven fabric. Okay, that's how we're going to get a nice strong seam, no ripples or puckers in the fabric. Um, we're gonna stabilize with the sticky Fabrisolvi. We're gonna use the right needle and we're gonna choose the thread that works best for us and for the project. So the first scarf is so easy that I don't even have step out photos to show you. I have the finished scarf to show you. 
in two different colorways. Now, this scarf was featured in Katrina Walker's book called Serger 101, A Field Guide. It's by Katrina Walker. You can find it through the links um, for the blog post for the ruffled frilly scarf. So what you're going to do is purchase either two or three or even four colors of that tissue weight, lightweight knit fabric. And we're going to set the differential feed on the serger as low as it can go past zero because we actually want that lettuce edge or that frilly ruffled edge of those exposed seams when you are piecing together the scarf. You can make this scarf as long as you want. Um, I believe Katrina started with a quarter yard of each color. You can make your strips as wide or as narrow as you want as well. You can really customize this for whatever scarf you want to create. So with those four colors, you're simply going to seam them together with wrong sides together because we want that ruffled serger edge to show on the right side. That's why if we use that 30 weight thread in the needles and the uh, 12 weight thread in the loopers, we're going to create a really cool effect with those blendables along those frilly uh, lettuce edges. So you are going to just do a lettuce edge rolled hem uh, setting with your differential feed at nothing or past nothing. And so all of your long edge seams. Then it's just a matter of hemming up the short ends and you're done. Like I said, you can create this in an hour or less. It might take you longer just to test your serger settings than it will to create this project. So you can really have fun with it. You can choose, like I said, just two colors, three colors, four colors, create narrow strips, wider strips, piece them together. Um, so this can get really cool really fast. Another option is you could sew those short ends together and have yourself another infinity scarf. So many options. So that's why, what I love about scarves as well. And choose that lighter weight, tissue weight, jersey knit um, for a nice spring accessory that's not going to be too heavy or hot um, while you're wearing it, you know, as the sun decides to come out or not throughout the day. <laughs> Here's another version of that same scarf in a really pretty teal blue with a, uh, paired with sort of a navy or cornflower blue color. And that's just two colors with one wide strip in the center and two narrower strips on either side. So lots of different options here. Really, really cute idea. So that's serger scarf number one. I mean, I barely have anything to talk about it because... It comes together so quickly. And if you have any leftover uh, knit fabrics from, let's say you joined us for our leggings video cast last week, and you have some leftover knit fabrics, you can create a frilly lettuce edge scarf. You could tie it around your head like a headband, um, and you're all coordinating and cute. All right. So the next scarf is the one I am wearing. This is really easy to create out of knit or woven fabric. Oh, I did want to mention, if you are creating that ruffled scarf and you're using a woven fabric instead of a knit, you're not going to have as many ruffles and pretty um, frilly edges because that fabric just has no stretch to it. So. Make sure that you have that differential feed set at, you know, its lowest setting so that you can have a little bit of stretchiness to the fabric, but definitely do some uh, test stitches uh, to make sure that you're going to get the effect that you want. Now, it would be just as pretty to have just a nice exposed rolled edge hem along a woven fabric that isn't curly and ruffly. It just gives it some dimension, especially if you use the blendables thread there. You'd have a nice thread effect without having those ruffles and ridges. Okay, but this scarf, no matter if you choose a knit or a woven, um, this scarf is going to look the same. 
The only difference is when you're wearing it. So I'm going to show you after I go through the tutorial, different ways to wear the scarf. But I mean, you probably know there are just so many different ways of wearing any scarf. There are tutorials for different ways of tying scarves, all kinds of things. You can really get creative and have some different looks. Um, with this one, if you want to have three revolutions of your infinity scarf, which I have this wrapped three times. So it's very long, you know, 60 weight or 60 inch wide uh, knit fabric. So I have the flexibility to go three times around with this one or two or one and have it be really long. Um, I can wear it as a bandeau top and then wrap it around and have it over my head as well. So you really need a stretch fabric if you want to have all of that flexibility. If it doesn't matter to you and you just want to have two revolutions of your scarf, a woven fabric is going to work just fine and still fit over your head without the need for it to stretch like that. So keep those things in mind when you are choosing the fabric for your projects. So speaking of Mother's Day, everyone, this is my mama. Can I get a what's up? <coughs> oh, that was a party noise. I don't know. I needed a different noise for that. Maybe applause. <coughs> okay. Sometimes I rope my mom into being a model for me. And isn't she cute? She uh, wants the scarf back um, as payment for modeling. So I'll have to give it back to her this afternoon after I show it off to you. <laughs> but at any rate, this is my mom sporting the scarf in the same way that I'm wearing it right now, which is um, three times around. You can see I've got one, two, three revolutions of the scarf. You can scrunch this up. I'm going to show you how to twist it or not twist it, but see how wide it is. You know, you can, had I had this at the soccer game last night, I would have been made in the shade. You can kind of mask it up and wear it like this. Anyway, I'll go through that in the end. So, um, yeah. We're gonna first start by surging the long edge of our scarf. So, you're, I, I started off with 18 inches of fabric by the, the 60 inch width. If you can only get 54 wide knit, that's plenty. I almost thought 60 inches wide was too long, but again, it allows me to wrap it several times and gives me the flexibility of wearing it so many different ways. Um, even, you know, as a, as a strapless garment, if I'm like, you know, I don't know, in Mexico or something <laughs> and have a bathing suit underneath, who knows? But at any rate, you're going to take your 18 inches and fold it in half lengthwise with right sides together and surge that really long edge. Now, I am just, I'm using a four thread overlock uh, stitch here. You can get away with a three thread overlock. That would be fine. Um, a three thread just means you have one needle securing the stitch and the two loopers going around the raw edge. A four thread overlock gives you the two needles or the two straight stitches with your two loopers forming your edge finish. So a three thread or a four thread overlock stitch would work just fine. If you are sewing this on your sewing machine, choose that stretch stitch or your narrow zigzag to do all of these construction uh, steps. Now it's very important on this long edge, we're gonna leave a little opening for turning. A lot of infinity scarves, you will find that they leave an opening along the short ends for uh, turning your scarf right side out. And I actually really don't like that. I want the join of those short ends to be totally perfect, nothing hand sewn. And if you put your opening along that long edge, you don't even have to hand sew it because if you're if you're using a knit fabric, because those edges are not going to fray and you can secure your serger stitches on either end and just kind of give it a little tug. And those raw edges can curl towards the inside and be completely hidden 
when you're wearing the scarf. So if you don't want to do the hand sewing to finish up your little three inch opening, you really don't have to, to be quite honest. Now I did, you don't have to, just saying. All right, so serge up that long edge. Be sure to leave your little opening for turning. Now with the knit version, I just did a little three inch opening. You can make it so small because your fabric's going to stretch and allow you to pull your whole scarf right side out uh, without needing a large opening. If you're working with a woven fabric instead, a quilting cotton weight or lighter, even a linen fabric, something like um, a pretty linen would be great for summer. You could use that as well for this and it would totally work. You might need a little bit bigger opening for turning so that you don't pop the stitches on either side. So just keep that in mind. Oh, here's just another view of that four thread overlock stitch that I'm using. So here I have the whole big old scarf. You could see my raw ends and then you can see my little opening for turning because I've got my, my serger thread tails showing right there. So to finish those little serger thread tails on either end of your opening, especially if you're not gonna hand sew that closed, what you can do is get a large eye needle, even a plastic knitting needle, um, you know, the, the needles you use to kind of finish your knitting uh, when you need to stitch or weave uh, the ends of your knitting together, even that would work for this. Um, but you're gonna take that serger thread tail Thread it into a really large eye needle. I have the one that I was using. And I, I'm sorry, I don't know what size the needle is um, because here it is. Because I just go into my stash of hand sewing needles. I don't know if you can see how big um, that needle eye is. But what I do is thread that serger tail through a large eye needle, and then I thread it through the serger stitches to kind of seal it off. And that way I'm not trimming right next to it and risking any of that fraying along that edge. I just pull it right through sort of the length of the serger stitches right next to it. And that's how I secure those ends on either side. Now, you don't need a humongous needle. You just need a needle eye that's large enough to where you can pull, um, you know, your four thread or three thread uh, stitch tail in through it. All right, so then what I do is reach into the tube and match up those short ends, making sure nothing is twisted yet um, with right sides facing. So you can see I have a pin mark along my serger seams, holding those serger seams together. And then I place a pin mark along the opposite edge where I just have, you know, the natural fold. So now my scarf is nice and flat on my flat work surface and I've got pins to denote where those serger stitches are and pins along that opposite edge fold. The reason I am pinning here is so that now I can twist the scarf and put some natural um, or actually forced <laughs> twists into the scarf and give it a little bit more fullness. Now, this is a totally optional step. This looks really nice in a lightweight cotton or linen um, to put a twist in your scarf. You can certainly just leave it totally uh, untwisted and flat. Um, and then when you twist it around your head to wear it, uh, you'll be creating, you know, a, a twist um, on its own, I guess. You can twist this up to probably four or five times if you have this long 54 inch or 60 inch length to your knit fabric. Um, I wouldn't really go any farther than four or five times with your twist. Um, you don't want it to look clumpy or look like an accident. Um, I mean, 
I don't know, maybe you do, but I wouldn't go any more than about four or five turns. Now, I just did this one twice. So what you're going to do now that you have that flat is on your inside short end where that pin is, you're going to hold that between your fingers and you're going to twist the fabric so that that edge now meets up with your serger edge and the serger edge now meets up with your other pin. Does that make sense? You're just twisting that inside fabric just like this. Then you can pin again if you want to make sure that you can flatten out the excess of your scarf. If you want another twist in it, you'll just do the same thing. Make sure you're going in the same direction and just twist them end for end now you're going to have your serger seams matched up again and your folds matched up again, but you're going to have two twists in your scarf. That's what I did for this one. You could go two more times if you want to have an even twistier scarf result. Oh, there I am matching up the opposite edge pin with that serger seam. And then we're just going to surge that whole edge. Same three or four thread overlock stitch that you used for that long edge. We're just going to sew up our little tunnel. And then all we have to do is turn it right side out. Oh, there's my edge all nice and flat and surged. Again, if you're using a sewing machine, this would be your narrow zigzag or stretch stitch finish. And now we're going to turn it right side out through that little tiny opening. Or again, if you're using a woven fabric, you'd have a little bit wider opening. Make sure everything is nice and flat. Here's what the opening looks like. See how those edges just kind of curl in towards the wrong side because I stretched it a little bit. You don't even have to finish that if you want. Leave it as is. Wear your scarf tonight and you're good to go. Or you can just hand sew it shut. I used some pretty poly deco thread that matched the scarf fabric and I just did a little slip stitch. And since it's just this tiny little seam, I did a little bit longer stitches than I normally would since it's a knit. You want that to stretch just like the rest of your scarf and you're done. I mean, so, so easy. So here is the scarf just wrapped around twice. And I will say it's very long, like very long. So if you are doing your woven fabric and, you know, woven fabric is usually about 44 inches wide, um, you might be able to get away with 44 inches for your scarf, depending on, you know, how many times you want to wrap it and all those things. If you want a longer scarf, you can piece together the length um, to get 54 ish. Um, and you would be fine. So this is very long. I mean, you have to wear it around twice, right? Like this goes down. I could jump rope with this, or at least my children could. So it's very long. But once you wrap it around twice, you know, and you can fluff these out a little bit if you want it a li to look a little bit wider and just kind of give it some fullness, you know, you can have your scarf just like this. Here's me and my mom twinning with it wrapped twice. Then we started really having fun with it. She was mortified. I wrapped it around her head. <laughs> she said, Ellen, I'm never going to wear it like this. I said, I might, someone might, we have to show them. So <laughs> here she is. I'll even do it since she was mortified by it, but I mean, I, I think this is a cute look. Come on. If I would have had this last night at the soccer game because I did not have a hood on my coat, um, you know, I think this is pretty cute. And it's wide enough that you can kind of cover a lot of your hair. Again, you could, you could mask it up, you know, wrap it around again. Um, so lots of different options here. Oh, Sharon says she looks ashamed. 
I don't think she looks ashamed. I think she looks sweet. She's like, I don't know. I was giving her direction. <laughs> okay. And then here it is. You could tell this is her favorite way of wearing the scarf, which is wrapped around one more time like I showed you, but lots of different styling options for your scarf. And you know, you do you. You do what you like, how you like to wear it. Um, it's just such a nice, this is an art gallery um, fabrics uh, knit and oh, it's so nice to wear and has such a great hand to it. So really cute, different ways of wearing it. And again, with um, about a half a yard of fabric, you can probably get two scarves out of that. Um, you do need that length in order to do lots of different wrapping styles um, and wearing options. So I'm going to go through the comments here. If you have questions, put them in the chat and we'll have a little chit chat and make sure we are addressing everything. Okay, Anita says she looks so cute. Thank you. Yes, much happier here. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Good, good. Phyllis says, I like the options. Yeah. Okay. Love the scarf. That's great. Oh, Don says, a linen fabric with embroidery would be so pretty. Exactly. So once you know the method, you can either do this version, you can do the ruffly version, you can do a scarf with embroidery. Um, since this is so wide, if you did do a linen, you could place an embroidery design. Let's say you're gonna go to a bunch of soccer games, football games, things like that coming up. You could do a licensed design of your favorite team or something like that, pick the colors, that you uh, associate with your favorite team and be so festive. So great idea. Do you serge around the short end? Yes, after you do those long edges, you would serge those short ends together just in the round. Because remember, we have that opening along the long edge seam and that's gonna allow us to turn it right side out. All right. Phyllis says, yay for your mom. <laughs> oh, the scarf looks lovely on your mom. I appreciate this. I'm going to share all of this with her. Maybe she's watching right now. <laughs> oh. See, see mom. Deb says hello. Hi, Deb. <laughs> we have to encourage her. You know, such a good sport. Such a good sport. All right. Oh, and Heidi, I probably answered this previously. If you don't have a serger, you can get close to that effect. Um, but again, depending on the weave of your fabric, how tightly woven it is, um, you might not get those lettuce edges with your differential feed setting, or excuse me, with your um, sewing machine setting like you would if you wanted those lettuce edge um if you wanted that lettuce edge effect, because you really do need that stretch in order for that edge to kind of wave like that. Um, so I would consult your sewing machine manual and see how you can get close. But if you did a very um, narrow or a very close satin stitch on your sewing machine, you could get that satin stitch edge um, exposed seam on the right side of that ruffly scarf version and you'd still have a really pretty edge finish. It just wouldn't be all crinkly and wavy like the knit version. All right, yes, never saw, thought of surging different knits together. It really gives a new dimension and a new look to that scarf. And again, you can create that ruffly edge version and just sew together those short ends and you'd have yourself an infinity scarf with the ruffly frilly effect. And you can also put a twist in that too. Lay your scarf out nice and flat and then simply flip one of the short edges, as many twists as you want, and then sew the short ends together, again, with wrong sides facing because you want that seam to show on the right side. 
and you would have that Mobius twisty infinity scarf version with those frilly edges. So you get the best of both worlds if you, if you kind of mash up these two projects together. All right, Esther says, I love making ruffled edges. I use it frequently to dress up t-shirts for granddaughters and myself. Then I remove the ribbing on crew neck t-shirts. That is a great idea. And, you know, last week we were talking about our leggings, our, D, um, our favorite leggings video cast, which we still have some kits available if you're interested in grabbing up one of our leggings kits. They have a really great poly blushed span, brushed spandex knit fabric um, in either galaxy or a tie dye version, and you can create your own leggings. Um, that video cast you can watch at any time on demand now that it was live last week, and you can learn how to draft your own leggings pattern and grab a kit with these great, great fabrics. Use your serger. If you've ever seen those really cute kid leggings that have the ruffles, the layered ruffles um, along the calf portion of the pants, I forget what brand it is, but you know, you see them all over the place. And I mean, my girls love things like ruffles and tutus and the frillier, the better at this point. I don't know how long that'll last, but maybe forever. <laughs> but you could draft a pair of leggings for them and then add rows of these frilly lettuce edges um, with some of the leftover fabric and achieve a very similar look. Just top stitch them or cover stitch them to um, the legs of the leggings before you do that inseam. Um, that's one continuous seam. Um, I won't give too much away, but you've got to, got to watch that leggings video cast. It's so informative um, and there's lots of ideas for personalizing things using your serger or sewing machine as well. And yes, Yolanda says a beautiful scarf with an elegant look. And that's what I love about this too, is you can dress it up or dress it down depending on the fabric that you choose. So you can make a jersey t-shirt knit type of scarf. You can make a really pretty, beautifully embroidered linen scarf. You can use a cotton voile or sateen um, or even like a chiffon um, and make yourself a scarf like this. If you have a summer wedding to go to and you want to cover up your shoulders or have the option of more coverage, um, if, you know, the day turns to night and it gets cooler, you can make yourself a really elegant style scarf like this. Um, or you can go super casual and wear it um, for the soccer games and practices like like I did, or like I will. So there you go. Just some different ideas. Angela says, when do you use the sticky Fabrisolvi? Okay, so that was my tip. If you're using a sewing machine and you are sewing knits. So this 54 wide or 60 inch wide knit um, often the, oftentimes wants to hang off of the sewing table while you're sewing it which creates more stretch in the fabric and can cause problems when you are trying to get a straight seam. Also, if you're having trouble with the fabric stretching while you're sewing it, maybe your presser foot pressure is um, too much and it's causing the fabrics to stretch, um, or if the top fabric isn't feeding through at the same rate as the bottom fabric that you're sewing together, um, what you can do is stabilize those seams before you sew them. So along the entire length of the scarf on both sides of the seam that you're sewing, you would cut strips of sticky Fabrisolvi, which has a sticky backing. So this has a paper backing to it. You'll take that away to reveal this sticky surface. And this is totally water soluble once your scarf is made. So you can apply strips of this sticky Fabrisolvi onto your seam on, again, both sides, the top side and the bottom side that you're sewing. Sew them together along that whole 60 inch width or length and nothing will stretch. Your seams will be nice and stabilized. I just have these pre-cut and ready to go because I use them so often. 
I have them in two different lengths. I cut this one at a quarter inch wide, and this one is at a half inch wide. You can go up even wider um, if you want even more coverage along your seam line. Sew your seams with your uh, stretch stitch or your narrow zigzag, and then you don't do anything at all until you throw your scarf in the wash. After everything's been sewn, you have hand sewed, your little opening shut, um, throw your scarf in the wash and all of that stabilizer will be gone after you get it out of the dryer. No one will know and you will have stabilized those seams perfectly. It's great for stabilizing necklines, hems, sleeves if you're making a t-shirt, um, great for stabilizing the side seam of your leggings if you're using your sewing machine because again, those long pieces like to drag or fall off the table while you're sewing, um, or just a whole slew of things can go on that causes stretching at the machine when you're working with especially lightweight or spandex blend um, uh, knits. So that was the idea behind the sticky Fabrisaldi. Okay. And Lori, I see your question about the leggings tutorial. Um, if you could post that question possibly on the uh, leggings session page, we can get back to you about that. Um, it's a little more complicated. Lori's asking about um, copying a leggings pattern um, and basically trying to copy the pattern on the fold. And I really wouldn't advise that because of the difference in crotch curve. So you really need to draft the front and then draft the back and then connect the two by adding that extra ease um, that's needed along that outer seam. So if you have more questions about that, you can always email us at info at sulky.com and we can address um, that question as it pertains to our leggings video cast. Okay, Anita says, is there a link to the beautiful threads you are giving away just in case I don't win? <laughs> Great question. So this is the Blooms and Breezes thread palette and I linked to it in the description of today's post. If you are not seeing that link, you can just hit that little see more button. The whole description for today's post will pop out and you'll see a link that you can head right on over and purchase the Blooms and Breezes thread palette. It includes 10 snap spools of beautiful, sulky, 50 weight cotton thread. You can use this for so many projects for spring and into summer. It's a great, great thread palette with the blues and lavenders and pinks. And I just absolutely love it. Great for a baby blanket or an apron or Mother's Day um, project, pot holder, something like that. So there you go blooms and breezes. So one lucky person who is watching, commenting, sharing, engaging with the posts, giving me those great emojis, you are automatically eligible for today's gift valued at $26.99. All right. Thank you, Anita. Okay. Oh, Deborah, thank you. Deborah says, if you set your machine for a very tight zigzag stitch and stretch the fabric tightly while sewing the knit, uh, while sewing the knit, you will get a beautiful ruffled edge on the knit. Yes, you will. Um, if you're using that woven fabric, though, I think I thought she was asking about getting that effect with a woven fabric, and maybe I got confused. Maybe she just said getting that effect on a sewing machine. So thank you, Dever, for that tip. Um, I may have misspoke there. Uh, Mary says, can you use swimsuit fabric to do scarves? Um, I mean, probably. I've never tried it. Um, but I suppose you could. Um, you know, if it's a four-way stretch fabric and it has a nice recovery to it, um, I suppose that you could. Sherry's asking, so you wouldn't use the sticky Fabrisaldi with the lettuce edge. Um, you know what? You want the lettuce edge to stretch. Um, you want your differential feed set, you know, as low as it can go, um, so that the fabric will stretch while sewing. 
So no, I would not use the sticky Fabrisolvi for that one, but I would use it if you're working on a sewing machine for this infinity scarf, um, which has all finished edges that are not exposed on the right side. All right, Ruth Ann says, great idea on stabilizing the seam. And beautiful thread palette. Yes, it is. I hope one of you win. Of course, one of you will. <laughs> Such pretty spring colors. Um, Robin is saying swim fabric seems too thick. And you might be right. Some swim fabric also has like a built-in lining to it too. Um, I've seen that before and those are really unique. Um, so yeah, I would just experiment, maybe get a swatch of it, see how it recovers, see if you would see how it sews when you put, you know, your layers together. Um, so you can always test it and see. Um, I have some silk with very little stretch. Can I use that for the scarf? You could use that for this infinity scarf for sure. I would make sure it's long enough. If you want to twist it around three times, you will, pro you will need 60 inches of length um, for a woven fabric, such as a silk um, that has no stretch. Um, so, but yes, I have made this infinity scarf out of a tightly woven fabric and a loosely woven fabric like a uh, lightweight linen, um, which would be similar to sewing that silk as well. I would go with a really fine, nice thread like the 50 weight cotton um, or even a 60 weight poly light um, for that version. So there we go. All right. I think I have caught up with all of the questions. If I have not and you still have a question that is unanswered, please feel free to email us at info at sulky.com because we are here to make sure you're having the best experience with sulky threads and stabilizers and that you are having fun at the sewing machine. So be sure to email us and get all of your questions answered. Um, you can also put them in the chat here and we will be answering or we can get back to you right here on Facebook or YouTube as well. So thank you all for joining me today. Be sure to Join me uh, next week because we are coming closer and closer to summer, closer and closer to Mother's Day. I have some more things to share with you next week, but this will be our last National Serger Month celebration, so what? So I hope you enjoyed all of the serger education that we brought to you this month. And of course, we like to bring you serger projects throughout the year as well. We just really focus on them here um, in April for National Serger Month. So I hope that you all got your sergers out, dusted them off, tried out some new projects and new techniques and had a blast. Um, I hope your serger is going to be a permanent fixture in your sewing machine and not in the closet gathering dust until next April. So let's celebrate our sergers and use them and make sure to make some scarves and share your makes on our Sulky Facebook group, which is Sulky Stitch and Post. If you haven't joined us over there, go ahead and search for Sulky Stitch and Post in uh, the Facebook search bar and you will find us. You can ask to join. It's a private group where we share our makes, photos, post questions to each other, and it's a great little community that we have growing over there. Um, all right, so thank you everyone again. I will see you next Tuesday and have a wonderful rest of your day.